Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome. My name is Peter Loveman, and I'm one of the members of session at Hope Presbyterian Church and want to welcome you to worship with us this morning. We're using the YouTube premiere option, which means that the content has been previously recorded and then aired live. If you're watching this live with us, please let us know in the live chat. If you're watching this in a computer browser, that's probably just to the right of this video. If you're on the church's email list, you already have the order of worship with the hymns. If you're not on the church's list, you can always download the order of worship with the hymns from the link in the description of this video. We have a few announcements from the session this morning. First, if you're a member of Hope and you've made a commitment to give this year, please continue to try and do that as you're able to, whether that be mailing that in or via a bank draft. And then also, as of this week, we have a Give Now button that's available on the website so that you can give electronically from that. So if you need to make use of that, please do so. Also, next Sunday, August 30th, immediately following worship, we are going to have a virtual uh, meet and greet with Dr. Reverend Michael Bow, who has been doing our sermon, just so that we can get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, that Zoom invitation will be coming from the church office and that will also be shared in a live chat next week. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to the prelude. Please join me in the call to worship found Psalms chapter 1, verse 38. We give thanks, O Lord, with our whole heart. We sing your praise. We bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have, been, have exalted your name and your word above everything. When we called, you answered. You increased our strength of soul. Everyone of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, though we walk in the midst of trouble. You preserve us. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Thank you. 
We are the people of God, but scripture reminds us that we still sin. We need to confess our failures knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ intercedes for us and freely forgives us through his infinite goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. Merciful God, in your gracious presence we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the sea. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse our good gifts of imagination and freedom of intellect and reason and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you and the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Hear the good news. Saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Our scripture reading today comes from Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me. You that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring my deliverance swiftly. My salvation have gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. This 
is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am to once again come to you each week. I am ever thankful for this gracious privilege of getting to know each of you, of getting to uh, enjoy uh, chatting with you or the emails. Um, I am ever thankful. Um, you guys are truly wonderful and I am blessed. I get to do what I love to do. I really enjoy my job. Um, and that includes my other job. For those of you that don't know, I manage a thrift store. Um, it's really a fun job. Uh, I meet a lot of great people. And I run into a lot of really cool stuff. Most of my house is filled with stuff that I got from the thrift store. And my store uh, survives and thrives off donations. Uh, yet, when the store was closed due to the pandemic, we ran into an issue of receiving donations, but we weren't able to sell them. So, people were at home cleaning out, throwing away, and yes, to our pleasure, donating but we had no way of moving it really out. And we ran into quite an amount of donation, which in the thrift store, this is a great problem to have. Yet it left my back room, my back processing room, the work area where we sort and price, it left it quite a mess because the pile was just so large. And the mess was almost overwhelming. It would consume my workers' attention and it would get very discouraging. The mess would absolutely consume everybody and it would almost hinder progress. It was very difficult to work in. Have you ever been consumed by a mess? Maybe the mess was a natural disaster, such as Hurricane Katrina. People did relocate here. Or, if you've lived in Huntsville, your mess could have been various tornadoes that have hit this town. Maybe it was something else in your life. Unexpected job loss. Bleak diagnosis from the doctor. Death of a loved one. Some circumstances in our lives are so messy that they can numb us and render us overwhelmed by the messiness of our own lives and our own pain. Because sometimes our messes are our own mistakes, our own choices. Sometimes it is absolutely evident that we created a disaster by our own choices. Our text in Isaiah begins with God saying, Listen to me. All the other stuff is just noise, so listen to me. These words were expressed to people who had experienced their fair share of pain. They were in exile. They were prisoners. Their city was burned to the ground. Their king was captured, tortured, and killed. Their relatives were killed. They were in a city that was a wasteland. Their lives were a mess. These people had lost all hope. All they could hear was the sound of their own sadness, and all they could see was the destroyed ruins of the life that they once knew. And whether they're expected, deserved, or thrust into our lives without warrant, depressing realities can foster all kinds of self-doubt. 
Why is this happening? Why me? What could I have done differently? Where is God in all this? It's easy to see and lose perspective in confusion, mess, and stress. Against all that, God, through the prophet Isaiah, challenged the people, listen to me. Because there's always hope on the horizon that we shouldn't be conformed to the world, but transformed. In one of my favorite movies, Bruce Almighty, Bruce was given the powers of God over New York City. He thought he could be a better God than God could. And he makes a mess. And there's a moment in the movie where he cries out to God and God has him, which is Morgan Freeman in this movie, in this white building, and they talk about such a mess. And him and Morgan Freeman begin sweeping, mopping, and at the end of it, Morgan Freeman tells him that there is no mess too big that God cannot clean up. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness. You that seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn. God was calling those that were upset and downtrodden to put things in their proper perspective. That although circumstances look discouraging, the prophet reminded the people that God can do amazing things from ugly situations. Because Isaiah tells us the Lord will comfort Zion. Comfort all her waste places and make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Focusing on God rather than the chaos all around us not only clarifies the perspective from the believer, but it allows us to see how God is working in all the aspects of our lives. Unfortunately, we don't really want to give up our way of living. I often teach classes at a men's recovery center that my thrift store supports. And it's a six month to a year program. And within that six months, they're required to do several classes, several AA meetings that they have a very filled up schedule that's filled with a lot of structure. And what I find interesting is that when these men go through the program and they have six to 12 months of sober living, and as soon as they graduate, they want to go back to their old way of life and forget all that structure and all those patterns. And they don't register that their old way of life got them where they was. They keep expecting different results. Yet God calls us to be a living sacrifice. The Greek word for sacrifice means to kill something. And we're not really used to seeing sacrifices. We don't have to bring an animal to the altar. Because sacrifices back then were bloody. But once the animal was killed, it was over. And then we had to do it again and again. However, we don't kill ourselves. It's not bloody for us. So what is put to death? We put to death the right to chew, to live as we choose. And this is completely counter to the way of thinking in the USA. We don't want anybody to infringe on our freedom. We don't want anybody to tell us that we have to live a certain way. 
We get bent out of shape when we're asked to wear a mask. However, our way of living gave us the chaos and the mess. God comes in and God cleans it up. And when this happens, we should sacrifice the idea that we know what's best for our lives. We sacrifice the idea that we belong to ourselves. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm quite stubborn. And to me, it really does feel like death to say to God, okay, you know best. It feels like death to me. But it's a sacrifice that leads to life. It's a sacrifice that clears and cleans our mess. Because this world is filled with messes. And it's quite difficult to stay focused on God when chaos is all around us. However, it's this type of focus on God that enables us to get a sense of God's presence amid all the chaos and mess. From the COVID-19, from the economic crisis, presidential election, or whatever chaos or mess you think of that cannot drown out the good news that God still speaks to us. And God is still saying to us, Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness. News of gun violence, my salvation will be forever. Unemployment numbers still climbing, my salvation will be forever. School is not meeting in person right now, my salvation will be forever. Health premiums continue to increase. My salvation will be forever. No matter the chaos, no matter the mess, God tells us, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. You who present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice. Because God is sovereign and knows all our messes. Yet God calls us to a better way of living. God calls us presenting ourselves as living sacrifices and challenges us to follow God's ways. Because when we do that, we see God working all around the world. And this happens to us through various gifts, making our community better. Because by God's grace, we are given gifts that when we accept that individuals receive different gifts from God, we become a vibrant, sacred community. And sometimes God works through us to clear the messiness of other lives. For example, Martin Luther King Jr. led a nonviolent movement to transform the soul and the laws of the U.S. and helped clean up the mess of racism. Sadly for us, we know that that mess is not completely clean. What we do know is that each of us is gifted with the ability to encourage others. Human effort is divinely inspired and energized. We're called to live in <coughs> God's future. And we're challenged to bring God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Because chaos does not have the last word. There isn't a mess that is too messy. Faith still listens to God's voice in spite of screaming cynicism and doubt, reminding us that God's salvation is sure 
and eternal. And it reminds us that God is still working for us and through us. What does this look like? What does it look like when my life is an utter mess? God tells me to listen. So hear the words of Holy Scripture. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministry. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Gracious and loving God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. It's good to be able to come to you and have this time to put aside the cares of life and the busyness of living. It seems we are constantly hurrying about, preparing, planning, 
fixing, organizing, and worrying about how everything is going to turn out. It seems our lives are always messy and chaotic. Thoughts tend to drown out your voice and what you want to say to us. We do want to hear from you, God, because we need to know again and anew today that you're there and that you know us. And we need to know where we are in our walk with you. Because our walks get distracted by our concerns. We continue to pray for the Dennis family. Between heart surgery and other health, health issues, we ask that you keep them in your loving arms. We pray for Nikki Wicks. We know when someone is pregnant, it is your vote that this world should continue. And we ask you to guide this pregnancy and give comfort and peace. We pray for Judy Count's relative. You know the concern, so we ask that you lead, guide, and direct this family. We come together praying for Janet Onkey and her health issues. And we continue to pray and ask for your love and support for Pastor Christy Ashton. We continue to pray for this family and their well-being. There are other concerns, holy God. Some are discouraged. Some are upset. And we live in an isolated world right now where we have to be distant with each other. We can't hug one another. Therefore, give us the ability to uplift and encourage our brothers and sisters. Help us to be sensitive to the needs of our brothers and sisters and encourage them. This living virtually is hard. We do care about each other and we want to show it. So we ask you to show us how to do that. Show us how to live. Show us how to love. We thank you for your guidance, O Lord. We thank you for your amazing love. So we ask you to hear our prayers, praying as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, what a joy it is to have you worshiping with us.
I'm so thrilled that you came. So today, may you go today knowing that God is with you in the messiest part of your life. May you go listening to God. May you spend more time listening to God and always remember that you are not alone because God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer is with you always. Amen. Thank you.